Hey guys! Now we're back here, but I just... I'm at the same time here. I'm gonna play a lot here. At least now, oh, okay. So, here we have this photo again. And we can see a game of poker was in the progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second, isn't poker gallon? That's a crime in and of itself! Oh, dramatic. <laughs> Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basis sort of criminal. Objection! Objection. And it's terrible. It'll, it'll, my voice is here. It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that. A game, in a pure sense. A competition, your honor. Ah, uh, eh, competition? Yes, a test of wits. A silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs. Which rests in blue flame, no it's follow final outcome. Uh, come again? Uh. Alright, so here we have the cards. The cards on the table had blue backs, Your Honor. I believe defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those prisons and impress women. That will be our first order in business here then. To find out more about this fatal game of cards. Very well, defendant. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. Note in the other text box that defendant had a big D. Or well, like a uh, uppercase letter. My pleasure. This is it, my first trial. Here goes nothing. Or here, yeah. Witness testimony here. So it's pretty fun. We can hear Phoenix testify here. I am a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. Play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game, and our customers are happy. Yes, they are. Hmm, a pianist who can't play the piano? Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. <clears throat> Very well, the defense may begin the cross-examination. <clears throat> Let me drink here. <clears throat> right, your honor. My first cross-examination. Here's the telling the truth theme. I love it, to be honest. <clears throat> Are you alright? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? It's a figure of speech, justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times. Though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What to do? Should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher course in cross-examination? Oh, uh, no thanks. <coughs> no need for help, sir. Here, sir. I think I've got this one covered. I think you'd better do more than think. You know, you know it or you do not. I'm fine, the courts of steel are ready for battle. My weapons press and present. Find any inconsistencies, any... This is what they always do, I mean they kind of give the tutorial anyways, even if you say no thanks, but they do it in, you know, a more uh, fast way, you know, like... Find any inconsistencies and lies in the testimony and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it, know it, do it. Inconsistencies, lies, Phoenix Wright. As if Phoenix Wright would never lie, and it's up to me to prove it. The defense may begin the cross examination. So I believe, unfortunately, we can't present anything here. Way to present the game, Apollo Justice Makers. Maybe you could create a contradiction here so people can learn to contradict here. So I think this is a press some statements to continue here so I'm just gonna press <clears throat> so first off a lot of people don't use the microphone for um, you know pressing and presenting but like I love it so I'm just gonna you know use use the microphone hold it hold it's it. kind of fun I'll pay you just to play poker
Alright, sorry for that cut. They p oh. <laughs> this is, I mean, I love voice acting, but you know, it can kind of get boring sometimes. <clears throat> that would seem to be the case. I am a professional after all. Bah, you had to take pride in that statement. It's just hard for an honest, hardworking member of, member of society like me to imagine. Yes, your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. <laughs> what? <clears throat> I've played poker for seven years in that little room, and I've never lost once. Whoop. You see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. Wait, you never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? The room where we play in the competition in the room of the main interactions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Hold it! And I was kind of sick, so I'm not gonna scream here, but... Um... Yeah. Just... Come on. Two decks of cards. A simple measure to present... To prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. <coughs> There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some flying scatter flying scatter on the floor. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards on the floor, each one forming a complete deck deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Incidentally, we used two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker you make five card hands. I can see how it could, would be easy to cheat. Heh, <laughs> yes, a game of hands. Yeah, me too, Apollo. I don't know what he means here. I'm not an expert in poker yet, really. <coughs> Whoops. Let me just skip this. Yep. So it's like kind of like I'm kind of glad, but at the same time not glad that they, you know, at the last statement, this button, the right arrow button, is actually a loop button. I can show a picture, actually. There. Put put it up on the screen. And if I didn't find anything, then <clears throat> that's bad. Hold it. So, you claim you weren't gambling. <clears throat> That's right, it was simply a game. You didn't bet any money, not even a little. The only thing at stake in our game is pride itself. Ho ho, well put, Mr. Wright. I've got a mind to play a hand of poker out of myself. Mistakes, your fate! Um, can we better get back to the trial now? I can't imagine. Oh, come on! Is it. I have to play, press more statements here. <clears throat> Hold it. Oh, I've pressed this. Jeez. Ah, these conversations are pretty long. Here. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. I'm not so close to the 3DS. That's kind of why. <clears throat> the room in the crime scene photo. Is it an attraction? It has quite a history, actually. <coughs> the Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. But black market? All in the past. Things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice it to say that there will be a lot of deals being made on the table. Right there in that room. You mean literally? Like, imagine them just making black market deals under that table. <coughs> a smoking room, a, a smoky room, gambling hoods. You know, just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. <coughs> yeah, me too. Actually, probably not. I mean, it's pretty animated. 
I thought forever, like, those uh, windows. Um, um, those, or, well, that bookshelf there was were windows outside. <clears throat> but apparently they're not, so... The bosses gather around the table, cutting deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. The window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout for a little else. Yeah, so I thought they meant like that bookshelf, but it's a bookshelf, not a window. The window they're talking about is the window right there. Well, I can't really point, but over the bottle you can see a, like a light thing there. <clears throat> yes, that's the window. The room had a few other tricks to it, though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room stepped in his steep in. Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. Boom. There we go. <clears throat> this competition you're talking about, I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. <laughs> That's right. It was a simple game after all. <coughs> Are you sure? Huh? <clears throat> People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment that the crime occurred. Did you claim no connection to the crime? Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. Oh, oh, I completely let that one slip by. <coughs> Don't despair yet, Justice. S sir? Right, there's something I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand, and I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? <coughs> Very well, the defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press, and I've got myself a whole new testimony. <coughs> I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. Objection! Says he has his fingerprints here. So, objection! No. Objection! Objection! There we go. So you say you didn't touch the murder weapon? This grape juice bottle? Right? So I said, something the matter, Mr. Justice? Hehehe. <laughs> that animation. Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see, and it was covered with the defendant's paint fingerprints. <coughs> that was hilarious. Maybe not. No need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Excess gelling can damage the judge's ears. In our case. But what about my course of steel? <coughs> Any anyway, what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints are alone, but... Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. They were upside down. Like this. When could he hold a bottle? Next time. I'm just gonna extend it here. Bottle is completely empty. Yeah. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted, and there can be only one reason for that. Great animation, by the way. There. I'm not around. Yes, to bring someone with the bottle. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh. I see no problem, Justice. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. Defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? 
I stand my, by my plea of silence regarding the murder. <coughs> For now. Hmm. Not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's kind of uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Objection! Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And the reason I do that voice for Mr. Gavin is because, um, it's because, you know, like his objection voice kind of sounds like that. It's like, objection! It's really weird. On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright. But still, that... Really? Um, yes, well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at a diagram of the murder scene, shall we? <laughs> the victim was murdered in a small room in a basement two floors down from the ground level. Of course, if cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in his hallway to go about the ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. And here comes the save button. I'm gonna stop playing here. This video is already 18 minutes. Well, 17 and 56, 57, 58, 59, and then 18. Alright, so... I should just stop recording here. Thank you guys so much for watching here. And goodbye.